Orchestra, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at St. Joan First United Methodist Church. Whether you're joining us here in the sanctuary or you're joining us online, we are delighted that you have chosen to worship with us on this very special morning. My name is Kim O'Haber, and I am serving as worship greeter today. This morning's verse comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation. Now, as we open our service of worship this morning, let's join together in song to praise the Lord. We will be singing angels we have heard on high, and that is number 238 in your hymnals, or you may follow along with the words on the screen. We'll be singing verses 1 through 4. Please stand if you wish and as you are able. Creed, and that's number 881 in the back of your hymnals, 
Or once again, you may follow along with the words on the screen. And now let's profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Pastor Dan, the senior pastor here at St. Joe First, and we are really glad you've chosen to worship with us in person or online. We are glad to have you here this morning. Um, you're in for a treat. Um, this cantata is a beautiful cantata. I heard it at the first service and was blessed, and I hope you walk away from this place feeling blessed as well. Well, today is our second Sunday in Advent, and last week we lit the candle of hope. We're going to relight that candle of hope, and today we're also going to be lighting the candle of peace, because Jesus Christ came to bring hope, and he came to bring peace into our world. Psalm 29:11 says, the Lord gives his people strength, the Lord blesses them with peace. I pray today and every day you experience the peace that can be found through Jesus Christ. May we be at peace with God, with one another, and may we all have inner peace. And may God bless you with the gift of peace today and forevermore. Amen. Now we're going to continue to worship the Lord. I invite you to, uh, uh, we're going to stand and sing. Oh, sorry, no, we're not. We're going to watch some video announcements first. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself there. So t uh, turn your attention towards the screens for this morning's video announcements. Good morning, everyone, and we are so happy you've chosen to worship with us. Whether you've been here for years or it's your first time visiting us, we want you to know that you are welcome. I uh, want to remind you all we have our connection cards available in the pew in front of you. These are how we have the most up-to-date and accurate contact information as possible, so please feel free to fill one of those out. And we have our prayer cards for if you or anyone you know is in need of prayer. Uh, we pray over you as a staff every week, uh, and we look forward to praying over you. Just got a couple of announcements before we get started this morning. Uh, the first is that I want to remind all of our middle school and high school friends that we have Stoke Youth Group tonight at 7 o'clock. Hope to see you there. And for all of our pre-K through 5th grade friends, we have our Spark Christmas Party this Thursday at 6 o'clock. Just a reminder, on the 24th and the 31st, we're going to be having one service at 10 a.m. all together. So don't forget that, and we can't wait to worship with you guys. We have a ton of Christmas services coming up. They're all going to be great. On Christmas Eve Eve, we have a service at 645. On Christmas Eve, we have our service at 10 a.m. Then we have a family service at 7 p.m. and a candlelight service at 11 p.m. We have some graphics with all of our services that you can pass around so you don't forget, and we can't wait to see you there. Let's continue to worship together. and uh, turn your hymnals to page 240 and we're going to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You can also follow along with the words on the screen. We'll be singing verses 1 through 3. <laughs>
be seated. Let us take a moment and let us pray. Father God, we are grateful to be gathered here as brothers and sisters in Christ, gathered to worship and praise your holy name, gathered to celebrate the fact that you loved us so much that you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, who was born in a stable stall in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, who grew up and lived a sinless life and taught us the ways of God and showed us a better way to live, who taught us to live a life of love and and a life of peace and mercy and kindness and forgiveness and generosity. And eventually, Lord Jesus, you went to the cross. And you paid the penalty for our sins. You died in our place to save us, to reconcile us, and to, make, to bring us at peace with God. And for that, we say thank you. And Jesus, we thank you that not only did you die, but that you rose again and that you conquered sin and death. And now you offer us the wonderful gift of salvation, a chance to be forgiven of our sins, to be forgiven of our wrongdoings, and to be brought into a personal, saving relationship with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the gift of eternal life with you in the kingdom of heaven someday. Thank you for all the ways you have blessed us. Thank you for our family, our friends, our health, and all the things you've given us, Lord. We thank you today for it all. And today especially, we thank you for the gift of music. And may today's music bless our hearts, draw us closer to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we offer children's church. And so if you would like your child to be dismissed at this time to go to children's church, they can. Or they may choose to stay with you today for the service. But at this time, the children are dismissed. And once again, I would ask you to... Uh, Watch the screen, because we're going to watch a video, and then I'll get into the scripture and message, okay? Today I'd like to share with you just one scripture verse. It comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. And it says this, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Well, last week, Savannah Tucker, our director of congregational care, shared a message that she titled, Jesus came to bring us hope. And the birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, does give us hope. Hope for salvation. Hope for a brighter future. Hope for an eternal life with God, our Creator. Today, I'm going to give a message on how Jesus came to bring us peace. You know, peace is a quality that we often take for granted. We don't appreciate its value till it's gone, till we no longer have peace. You know, here in America, most of us take for granted that we are at peace with the countries around us. But I bet many people in Israel and Ukraine wish that they were at peace with the countries surrounding them. And I know many Christians and Jews who are praying for peace in Israel. And, and many Christians and people are praying for peace around the world. And I bet if you're married and you're not at peace with your spouse, you're really wishing you were. <laughs> or maybe you're not at peace and you're always in a conflict with your child or grandchild or close friend. And, and there's strain, there's tension, there's... There's something there that's causing discord. 
If you're in that type of situation, I bet you're wishing you were at peace with that person. Or maybe it's at work. You're not getting along with your boss or coworkers, and there's more stress and more frustration and, and you're getting angry and upset and you're, you are not at peace when you're there and you wish you were. Peace is a wonderful quality to have. It's a precious gift to be enjoyed. And it's a wonderful thing to strive for, to be at peace with others. The scriptures teach us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The passage I read to you declares Jesus to be the Prince of Peace. And that his life, death, and resurrection brought peace to our world, the scriptures teach us. So let's explore three ways Jesus brings us peace. Peace with God. Peace with God is the first type of peace Jesus wants to bring us. The birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, has the potential to bring you to peace with God the Father. You see, the scriptures teach us that sin separates us from God. Our evil words and actions anger a holy and righteous God. I want you to think of it this way. You know, parents always love their children, don't they? But when their children say bad and inappropriate things, the parents are disappointed. And they may even get angry at what their child said. Or if the child does something evil or mean or cruel or, or disrespectful or selfish, the parents may be upset with their child's behavior. That's us and God. God loves us. He always loves us, no matter whether we're living good and right lives or whether we're, we're rebelling and walking away from God. He still loves us. But he may not always be happy with the things that we do and the things that we say. God loves us and he taught us the right way to live and the right way to speak and the right way to treat others. And he's, he's told us to live a life of love and kindness and selflessness. So when we do unloving, unkinds, and selfish things, it upsets him. And, and those words and those actions bring strife and heartache and pain into our relationship with God and with other people. And they make us distant from God and other people. The Bible truth that, 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 that we need to realize is that sin separates us from God, but it also separates us from loved ones. When we sin and we do wrong towards a spouse, a child, a friend, a coworker, it causes division and heartache and pain and, and separation in those relationships. However, the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, shows that God still loves us, that he wants to be in a close relationship with us. In fact, he'd do anything to bring us back into a right relationship with him. And we need to realize that Jesus came into the world to help us find peace with God. Jesus' teachings reveal how to be at peace with God, and it basically boils down to, to confess your sins, seek forgiveness for your sins, and then strive to live a good and right life. You know, Jesus, he lived a sinless life so he could pay the penalty for our sins, for our wrongdoings. This tiny baby who was born in a stable eventually grew up and he died on a cross so we could be at peace with God. Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we were healed. Jesus' death paid the penalty for our sins. Now all we have to do is confess those sins and, and turn away from sin and, and strive to do what is good and right in God's eyes. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and begin to live the way God has taught us to live. Jesus came so that we could be at peace with God. Romans 5.1 says, We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with each other is the second kind of peace Jesus came to bring. While Jesus was here, he encouraged us to be peacemakers and to do all that we could to live at peace with our neighbors. And the Bible is full of messages and passages about followers of God striving to live in peace. 
I want to share some of them with you because I want you to go out and be that peaceful person and bring peace to your homes and workplaces and to our communities and to our world. Romans 12, 18 says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. 1 Peter 3, 11 tells us to turn from evil and do good and that we must seek peace and pursue it. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 says, Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. And in Matthew 5, 9, Jesus tells us, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Jesus, the Son of God, came to break down the divisions and strife between people. He came to make us one, to unify us. And he invites us to be a part of one family, his family, to be part of one kingdom, his kingdom, to belong to one flock, his flock. Friends, I don't have to tell you, but we, we live in a world that is full of sin and strife and chaos and stress. And God wants us to be peacemakers. To go out and share his love and his peace with others and to bring peace to, to families and communities and workplaces and work environments. He calls us to live in peace with others. And then finally, Jesus came to bring us peace within ourselves, to give us inner peace. You see, when we are at peace with God and others, we are more likely to experience inner peace. When we know our sins are forgiven and that we are loved by God no matter what, we are more likely to have peace of heart and peace of mind. And when we are living out the teachings of Jesus and God's holy word, we experience inner peace. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of right living and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And Isaiah 32, 17 says, the effect of righteousness will be peace. Do you hear that? The effect of living a good and right life is peace. And then Psalm 119 says, great peace have those who love God's law. And then in John 16, Jesus is sharing godly truths with his disciples. And then he says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. You want inner peace? Then love the teachings of the Bible. Strive to live them out. Love God. Love your neighbors. Strive to be at peace with God and your neighbors and see how it brings you inner peace as well. Friends, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he wants you to be at peace with God and at peace with others. And he wants you to have inner peace. This Christmas season, may, you, may we all experience the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen. We take up our tithes and our offerings. We give back to God in gratitude for all he has done for us and all he has given us. But more than that, we give because we want to be his hands and his feet and his heart and his voice in spreading the good news, in reaching his people, and in growing his kingdom here on earth. There are a number of ways that you can give, and they will appear on the screens behind me. So as you enjoy the orchestra's next selection, I pray that you will give in accordance with what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. Thank you.
There came a man who was sent from God. There came a man who was sent from God. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. His name was John. He came as a witness. Concerning the light, so the law to him might believe. There came a man who was sent, who was sent from God. There came a man who was sent, who was sent from God. There came a man who was sent from God.
Well, I want to take a moment and thank Jim Krause, the orchestra, the singers. So, yeah, let's give another round of applause. Thank you for offering your gifts and your talents today. I know there's many hours of practices that uh, went into this before that, so thank you for your time and your talent. I don't know too, but I'm grateful that God gave us the gift of music, and he gifted us with wonderful musicians like these today who have blessed our hearts. Um, I want to close by giving, well, let me just say this. You heard the story of Jesus Christ through the cantata today. The story of how the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I hope you take that Christmas story with you. And today you also heard about this child, Jesus Christ, this word who became flesh. How he was the savior of the world and how he grew up. And how he came to bring us peace. Peace with God and peace with others and, and peace within ourselves. I hope you were blessed through today's music and message. And now I want to send you out with a blessing from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. And it says this, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and everywhere. Now go in the peace of the Lord. Amen.